Let's take a look at how you can enhance an event structure to execute one time when the VI first runs. To illustrate the problem that I'm trying to solve, let me begin by showing you a simple demonstration here where I have two values being multiplied together and a result that's being displayed. Now, changes on the A and B controls show up as an execution of this subpanel. Then, when we see a value change on the stop button, that breaks us out of the event structure and breaks us out of, out of the while loop and the VI stops. Now under normal circumstances, when we run the VI, we see that the result is fully interactive. That is, as I move the A and B controls, we see the output is instantaneously updated. Let's bring these back to zero and then stop. Now, again, the event structure is looking for a value change on either of these controls. If we change one of the controls while we are not running the VI, in fact, let's change both of them, we expect in this case the result to be two times a little bit above three. We expect it to be somewhere around six or seven. But note that when you run it, nothing evidently happens on the output. It's still pegged at zero. But the moment I nudge one of these controls, suddenly the process updates and then it starts to operate as we expect. I'll hit stop here. Say let's pick some different values while the VI is not running. We expect the result to be around one. And again, it's not until we nudge one of the controls we actually see the output going to one. Now this may or may not be a trouble for you depending on your application, but in many times we like to see that when you first start running the VI that it responds to the current value of the controls. Again, just to reinforce what's happening here, I'll set the controls to a different value and then note that the, the event structure has not actually executed yet because the while loop is still at its zeroth iteration. But the moment we see a value change on either A or B, then we see the numeric indicator starting to show up as uh, indicating that the event structure is in fact executing. Well, let's investigate how we could solve this problem. I'm looking up here at the uh, timeout terminal. And I'm looking at the help page. And in particular, I want to draw your attention to the values that we can wire to this terminal. We either can wire the number of milliseconds to wait until we time out and execute the event structure anyways, even in the absence of a value change or we set the value to negative one in order to disable that timeout processing. I'm going to re-add the timeout as one of the events that's included as part of this particular sub-diagram. The timeout is actually in there by default and I'd, I had uh, chosen not to use it earlier. Let me add some room here because I'd like to get in some wiring in front of this timeout terminal. Let me begin by creating a constant. And again, the default is negative one, and that means that no timeout processing will take place. Next, I'm gonna place this node from synchronization subpalette called first call. Let's put that right here. Let me begin by looking at the help page for this. See what we can find out. It says we can place this anywhere and it returns true the first time that that particular structure or portion of the block diagram runs. To see this in action I'm going to create uh, an indicator right here. Incidentally I'm doing control click down and drag with the mouse by the way to open up that space. Let me create an indicator right here. Let me get these set to some approximate values. Place the indicator down here. Let's watch this one. When I first turn it on, this is before we've gone into the event structure, we see that first call was true. Now that we're 
uh, into while loop processing, we see first call is false. Let's try that one more time. We haven't started yet. And then the moment that we start executing the event structure, first call goes to false. Now we can use that to our advantage here. Next, I'm going to use the select node, and then I'm going to use first call to choose whether or not we select a negative one for the timeout terminal or whether or not we select zero. Zero means uh, it process on a timeout immediately. That's zero milliseconds delay. And then again, negative one tells us that we disable our timeout processing. Now the upshot of this little structure that I've just placed is that on first call, we send in a zero to the timeout node and the event structure executes immediately. But it does so only one time because on subsequent uh, passes through the while loop, we send in a negative one. So we can see that you can set the values in advance. You can predict where it's supposed to go, in this case six. And when you run it, it immediately runs that uh, sub diagram of the event structure. All right, this looks pretty good. Let me try one more possibility here. Three times three should carry us around to nine, and that's where it ends up, just a bit above nine. All right, now you know how to execute the event structure one time when the VI begins to run.